Shema Yashar Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Ha, Shema Yashar Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Ha, Brakati Yahawa, Brakati Awashai, Brakati Yahawa, Brakati Awashai. All right, uh, call on Yahawa by Shimmy Awashai, by Shim Rahaha Kudash. All right, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Who taught me this 100% truth according to the Holy Scriptures? Peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there that's been doing the work with truth and sincerity. All right. All right. And uh, shalom, you know, to you, Aki, man. This is the brothers of Raya Allah down here at the GMS Virginia camp back with another lesson. Through the Spirit and Pavi, how about Shemi Al Shai is committed to do so? And I pray and hope that this lesson fire to be edifying to the hopeful elect. All right. This lesson is going into, okay, prophecy. Okay, I mean, it's like it. DNA is the true prophecy. All right. And I have this definition for the word uh, DNA. Okay. It says DNA definition. It says the fundamental and distinctive characteristics or quality of someone or something, especially when regarding as unchangeable. Okay. It says diversity is a part of the company's DNA. Okay. So let's go into this word uh, fundamental really quick. All right. Let's go into the word fundamental. It says forming or necessary base or core, central importance. Okay, so it is the, the 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 fundamental of the scriptures, man, is the is the uh, is the basics, man. Okay, the milk, the understanding. Okay, when you have the fundamentals, okay, the the basic understanding of the scriptures, you're able to what? Distinctive, okay. When you go into distinctive, right, you're able to distinguish, okay, being able to tell the difference between who is who, okay, is this lining up with what prophecy is saying, okay, is this the truth or is this a lie, okay? You're able to pinpoint and literally, uh, when you read the scriptures, you're able to apply it to today's life, you're able to apply it to today's time, man, okay. So, when you look at the things that are going on, you're able to distinguish, okay, these are the people, these aren't the people. Okay, this is what our people are falling to according to the curses, man. This is what's supposed to be happening in the last days, man. Okay, and that's how you know, okay, when the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is dealing with you because what? You have the spirit of prophecy that's within you and you have the spiritual discernment, man. Okay, so I'm going to read it again. It says the fundamental and distinctive characteristics or qualities of someone or something. OK, especially when regarded as unchangeable. OK, and they can't change prophecy, man. They cannot make themselves. OK, the children of Israel. OK, they cannot uh, make themselves a part of the 12 tri uh, tribes. They can't make themselves the elect. They can't make the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshai deal with them. OK. All right. So I just want to get a couple of uh, scriptures. OK, concerning uh, prophecy, man. OK, because uh, DNA is our true prophecy, man. All right. And matter of fact, um, matter of fact, let's get this uh precept real quick. This is uh Romans. Okay, Romans chapter eight and verse sixteen. It says, "The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai." Right. The Spirit, the Rachaha Kodash. Okay, which is a uh, is a uh, is a actual literal spirit. Okay, in the form of a man. Okay. And it comes down to us, okay, through the Holy Scriptures for us to understand the, the Scriptures, man, okay? It's a, it's a spirit of a man, all right? And and, and that, that spirit that is uh, is coming from, from the heavens, okay, we're able to uh, resonate with it. We're able to get the understanding, which is that breath. It's that life, okay? Which uh, it, it comes in different uh, formalities, okay, or, or different uh, ways that uh, the scriptures describe it. It describes it as oil. It describes it as, as living water, okay. Uh, it describes it as uh, what's another one that I can think of? Uh, Salakia, but um, yeah. So uh, the wind, okay, yeah, the wind, Salakia, uh, that that breath. So I'm gonna read it again. It says Romans eight and sixteen. The spirit itself. Bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Who's suffering? Okay. The nation of Israel. Okay. More so the elect. We're suffering. Okay. Because what? we When we came into this truth, okay, it says in Sirach 2 and 10, it says, prepare thy mind. I mean, Sirach 2 and 1. 
It says, prepare thy heart and thy mind for temptation when you come to serve the Lord. Okay, so the ones that are serving Yahweh by Shem Yashah, we're taking a part of those sufferings that Yahweh Shah took of, man. Okay, we're drinking of that cup. Okay, and those are characteristics, okay, and indicators to dis distinguish, okay, who's the elect. Okay, because what are the elect going to be doing in these last days? Okay, they're going to be suffering. They're going to be preaching the word. They're going to believe in. They're going to be calling on the true names. All right. And this is why it brings me to this next scripture. This is the book of Peruk, chapter three. And I start at verse four. It says, O Lord Almighty, thou power of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and the, their children, which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of their uh, power for the the witch caused these plagues cleave unto us, man. Okay, so the disobedient Israelites, okay? And when it says dead Israelites, it means spiritually dead, meaning they don't have the breath in them yet, okay? That's why the Lord Yahweh Shai said, let the, bed, let the dead bury the dead. He was referring to the Israelites, okay, who didn't have that breath in them, man, okay? Who didn't have belief, okay? Who wanted to still be of uh, the spirit of this world. Okay, and it says, for which cause these plagues to cleave up unto us, man. Okay, because as a nation, we have sinned against Yahweh Shem Yahshai, so therefore, we have been plagued. And that's why it brings us to what? Amos 3 and 1. It says, hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known. Of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. Okay, so the Lord has punished us, man. The Lord has punished the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, for our iniquities, man. Iniquities, transgression of the law. Okay, the law was only given to the nation of Israel, so we're the only ones that can sin and be saved from sin. Okay, so let's go back to Baruch. Baruch 3 and verse 5, it says, Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Okay, and we're in that time. It says, For thou art the Lord our power, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. It says, For this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, okay, to the intent that we shall call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Yeah, so the Lord put the fear in our hearts, man. The Lord put the spirit on us to wake up. The Lord gave us that breath of life, man. The Lord gave us the Rechah HaKodash to call upon his name, okay, in our captivity, man. And we're in captivity right now, okay? Babylon the Great, okay? It says, for we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. It says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our forefathers which departed from the Lord our power. Yeah, okay, subject to those payments. Man, hey, today, you know, personal testimony, I had to pay damn near $800 in fucking tolls, man. That shit is wicked as hell, man. And the crazy part about it is they'll send you the bill for the toll, but they won't send it to you a month or two later, man, okay? So then now it gives it time to, to build up so you can owe them more money, man. You know, and it says as a reproach and a curse, man, you know, we have been reproached, man. Been called these different by words, nigga, Afro-American, OK, black, black African-American, OK, color, you know, so on and so forth. And it says a curse, man. OK, that part of those curses means being subject to those payments. OK, us being one of the betrothal wife and another man sleeping with our woman. OK, our, our women, they have been a uh, uh, curse. Okay, with um the, the the scab of their head, meaning they lost their hair. Okay, we serving our enemies. Okay, from a far land. Okay, there's, there's so many different curses, man, that what we fall under, man. Okay, and what that's for the uh, iniquities that we uh transgress. Okay, the laws that we broke. Okay, of the covenant that we didn't keep with the how about Shemiah Shai, man. So now we're paying for it now, man. But soon these curses are going to be lifted up, and that's what brings us to Micah. Uh, the fourth chapter, man, and this goes into everything that I was speaking on. It's going to basically conclude this whole lesson. OK, so this is Micah chapter four and verse one. It says, but in the last days, I shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow onto it. OK, the people meaning all the nations, man. OK, and it says the top of the mountains, meaning the government, okay, the body of the nation of Israel, starting with the 144,000, man, okay, and King David and Yahweh Shai, all right, and you got to say that because, you know, these simple niggas, oh, you say that, nah, man, okay, 
King David, Yahweh Shai, you know, 144,000, so on and so forth, man. So it says, verse 2, and many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of Yahweh and Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And do you see that now? Okay, are those people in those lands, are we going up, okay? To uh to serve Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shai, okay, and to walk in his ways, okay, is all nations, okay, under the subjection of the law, statute, and commandments? No, they're not. Okay, they're obeying the laws of the land that Esau has created, man. Isaiah 10 and 1. Okay, writing these unrighteous decrees, man. All right, they're following these laws, man. They're not following the laws of Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shai, because you still have people eating shrimp, crab, pork, lobster, okay, these abominable foods, doing these abominable things, all right. So, hey, there's, there's no way in hell, okay, that there are the people, man. And this is a, a indicator, man. This is that DNA, okay? So, it says, verse 3, And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Right, here it is. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. What's the modern name sword? Okay, the gun, nuclear weapons, okay, those, those, those helicopters, uh, you know, those, uh, those... What is it? Uh, I can't think of it. Those basically those planes where they the dog fighters that they used to call it, but now it's a modern day god dog fighters where they got all the type of gunships and, and things of that nature, man. They're weaponry, okay? They're arsenal. So it says they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And do you see that? No, no, you see uh wars, you see rumors of wars, man. Okay. Pursuant to Matthew, the 24th chapter, Luke, the 21st chapter, okay? We still have war going on. So those can't be the people. So that's another indicator that they're not the people that they claim to be. It says, verse 4, But they shall sit in every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of his hope has spoken it, man. Okay? Everybody's going to be in their own land, man. Okay? It says, verse four, verse 5, for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of our Lord, our power forever and forever. Yeah, man. Okay, so everybody's going to go back to, you know, doing their own thing. But what? They're still going to be our tribute, our tributes, man. And they're going to give tributaries, okay, to the nation of Israel. They're going to pay their tithes, okay, every year or every month or whatever the case may be, according to the law, okay. They're going to be giving us all different types of riches and golds, okay, uh, lambs, goats, you name it, all right. They're going to be subject unto us, man, okay? And the laws of the land is going to be the law, statute, commandments that the Lord Yahweh Shem Yashai gave to the nation of Israel. And we're going to be the, uh, basically, the, the kings and rulers, man. We're going to be enforcing these laws. And anyone that break it, they're going to uh, receive the punishment for it, man. It says, uh, verse 6. It says, in that day, said the Lord, I will assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that had halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Yeah, so the Lord is going to gather the elect, okay, throughout the four corners of the planet Earth that was cast off, okay, and we're going to be a strong nation again, okay, and the Lord is going to rule over us, man, forever and ever, okay? It says, verse 8, Thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. It says, uh, matter of fact, I just want to get to the point. Let me see. So lucky. Okay, Khan. Uh, I'll, I'll read verse 9. Uh, the point is intent. This is no. Now, why doest thou cry out aloud? Is there no king of thee? Is thy counselor perish for pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail? Okay, and we're crying out because our king isn't here. He's not ruling us, man. Okay, we're being ruled by this goddamn heathen, the, the, the basis of men. Okay, the vile of the earth, the cursed. Okay, this damn nigga E. It says, verse 10 Be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even to Babylon, right? We're here in Babylon, America. Babal means confusion. This place is full of confusion, okay? Bring out, uh, many bros have brought it out in lessons, man. The confusion that uh, Babylon is bringing. Okay, men want to be women. Women want to be men, okay? You got the, uh, the worship woman spirit, you know? You, you got all these different types of uh, genders. I mean, there's so many different things that's, that pushes uh, confusion, man. People don't know their roles, man. 
All right. So it says, there shall thou be delivered. Okay. We're going to be delivered out of Babylon. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thy enemies. Right. So pursuant to uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it says, no man shall redeem thee or no man shall buy you. Okay. And we were bought by the blood of Yahweh Shai, man. And we know according to Isaiah, the 47 chapter it says, he will not meet thee as a man. So the Lord, okay, is not coming as a regular man. He's coming as a, ter a extraterrestrial uh, force, man. Okay, spiritual body, man. Okay, and he's going to redeem the elect out of Babylon and the rest is going to perish. Two thirds of our people, these other uh, nations, okay, and the wicked, okay. A fire is going to be kindled here in Babylon, okay, and they're going to be burnt up according to prophecy, man. Okay, so I just wanted to bring out this, you know, quick hit through the spirit of Yahabashim Yashai concerning that DNA, okay, is the true prophecy, man. And I want to get this word DNA real quick again, you know, for the ones who uh, didn't see it. It says DNA. It says the fundamental and distinctive characteristics or qualities of something, I mean, so like it, of someone or something, especially regarded as unchangeable, man. Okay, so hey, basically DNA is, is indicator indicators or characteristics, okay, or qualities of something or someone, okay, meaning that you're able to tell who is who, what is what, when's this supposed to happen, when's that supposed to happen, man, okay, and we do that by what? Prophecy, that's how we measure uh, uh, the scriptures, through prophecy, okay, because prophecy is that uh, measuring stick, man, or that measuring rod, okay, so, you know, with that, Lord one of us was edifying through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rachah HaKodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And Kazakh Shalom to the hopeful elect. Kwame Yashorala and Shalom.